it is so warm. I mean, granted, it's UK warm, so probably for everybody else it's chilly, but here I'm melting. Hello again, my name is Stacey, I'm a mess in a dress, and welcome to today's upload. Today we are finishing up the May wrap up, so part one uh, was uploaded like a couple of days ago, so here's the link if you need if you need to catch up on that one. And today we are finishing up. I'm really quietly confident that this video may not be as long as my videos normally are because one, I've got slightly less books to talk about than normal and two, a lot of them are part of a series so I'm going to try and kind of smish them all together to wrap things up quickly. So without further ado, let's get started. So first up, speaking of a series that I've really enjoyed, I have recently become completely addicted to a romantic suspense series, which is the Linear Tactical series by Janie Crouch. And this is a series of books that all feature around a small town, I think it's called Oak Creek. And basically they're a group of guys who will work for this tactical company, so they do kind of like self-defence training, uh, mission training, and they also occasionally get sent out on tactical missions like rescue and things like that. And each of the books features a different couple and they are all technically standalone but they all interconnect to a certain degree. I don't think you probably have to read them in order. I did. And if you do then you will notice kind of like characters coming back into it and the storylines building up on each other and some of them refer back to each other books. But you probably could dip in and read the odd one and you would figure out what's going on if you so wish to. Each of the books, like I said, features a different couple and this they all feature kind of like a really varied range of scenarios. So, so for example in the first book, which is Cyclone, there is a rapist who's going around the town and he um, targets one of the heroines. However, there's also an emotional romantic past between her and the hero that they're dealing with at the same time and that all gets wrapped up and meanwhile he has to rescue the heroine and it's all, it's all a thing. Um, there's also things like there's terrorist plots, there's sex trafficking, there are mob stroke mafia x kind of things there's a lot of government secret operations going on so each book covers something slightly different and each one does come with its own kind of trigger warnings because some of these deal with really quite deep and not particularly pleasant topics and if that's not your bag then you probably won't like these books i personally really enjoyed every single one of them they were so easy to read i loved all the couples i loved the variety how you're in the same setup, but everything is happening quite uniquely and quite differently. I mean, let's be honest, no one would want to live in Oak Creek. I mean, it must have the worst property market on the planet because if you think there's like a group of 12 friends, 12 male friends and 12 female friends, and they've had the worst, the worst look, like every single one of them has been attacked or kidnapped or had an attempt made on their life or something, I mean, you would not want to live and be friends with these people. You just wouldn't. So my two personal favourites of these books were, let's see if I can remember the names of them, Angel and Redwood, which is quite funny to me because when you actually read them, they're quite similar in theme. Both of them feature heroines who have quite troubled or damaged pasts and they are seen quite negatively by the other characters, or they would be if they knew who they were, and both of them have to, like, in Angel, the character Jordan has a criminal past and the town hate her, and she's generally considered to be a bit of an outcast. And in Redwood, the main character is Lexi, Lexi, and she is, again, someone who's on the run from a past and she's trying to cover up who she is. And both of these also feature quite straight-laced heroes who think they're very much on the side of good and very kind of self-righteous almost but they are won over by these women who need their support there was an absolutely beautiful scene in angel between jordan and i feel like it's gabriel i feel like gabriel is her partner and uh it's just, when he suddenly realizes that she needs his protection and that even though maybe she's made mistakes in the past she needs someone to look out for her and help her oh I melted. So the books in order are Cyclone, Eagle, Shamrock, Angel, Ghost, Shadow, Echo, Phoenix, Baby, Storm, Redwood and Scout I think are the ones that I've read so far and I believe there is two more to go and the last book which I'm super excited is the book between two of the children who've been like regular 
characters throughout all the stories have now grown up and they're going to get their HEA and I was so excited for that one because they're so cute and they've been so protective of each other all the way through the series so I can't wait to see how that all wraps up for them but this series has been such a gem I've loved every minute of it I read I think the first however many of those I read the first chunk of these books in like two or three days so I really can't wait till the last two are released and I can get my fix and I also should probably go and give something else by Janie Crouch time a chance because I have been super impressed with everything I've read so far. So next up was an arc that I got from NetGalley and this was a Mills and Boone book which I love Mills and Boone as you can probably tell and this was stolen in her wedding gown. Um, the author escapes me a moment so I'll put it just here. But this was a... how do you explain this book? So basically our hero is in some kind of inheritance war with his siblings. He doesn't get on with his siblings, he didn't get on with his dad, his biological father. He discovers that whichever sibling marries first and stays married for a year will inherit the company and he also discovers that one of his brothers, who he absolutely hates, is getting married, like, soon. Very soon. Um, and so he decides to go and disrupt the wedding and make it so that his brother won't get married and he actually turns up at the wedding and he, for all intents and purposes, kidnaps the bride while she's in her wedding dress. Hence the title. The heroine has kind of business reasons of her own why she's marrying this guy and basically her and the hero come up with some kind of way of both getting what they want which involves an arranged marriage that has to last for at least a year and they go off to a deserted kind of isolated island where they're gonna live together for a while and they're gonna fall in love obviously. So this book started out really, really well. The beginning is really action-packed, it's really fast-paced. I loved all the kind of business, wheeling and dealings and all the intrigues. But it just, once I'd got on the island, it sort of petered off for a bit for me. And the romance seemed to be incredibly slow going and not even in that kind of steamy, lots of sexual tension way, but just in that nothing much is happening way. And ultimately when they got to the final conflict and the final happy ever after, I just really wasn't, I wasn't there with it and I think it's one of those weird books where overall I liked the beginning I liked the end but I didn't necessarily love the journey I think that's where I was with this one so it was a very okay read it was fine it didn't take a long time it didn't take a lot of effort but I wouldn't say it was my favorite thing I've read in May by a long shot next up was another arc from NetGalley another Mills and Boone which I really really did enjoy and this was the Viking Chiefs Marriage Alliance by Lucy Morris and I love a good Viking novel, like I love it. It's You don't get many of them all the time, they're not the most common historical romance you'll find and I haven't read one in donkey's years, but this one was really really good. It starts off with a daring shipwreck rescue from the hero to the heroine and I really really enjoyed that, it was a cracking start. And what I really really liked about this book is, as well as all the romance and the steaminess and all the kind of their relationship developing, I really liked the fact that it also it was less of a stereotypical viewpoint of Vikings, raping, pillaging, burning villages, all that kind of thing. And it was more like a genuine look at the life of a Viking person. So you saw very much behind the scenes and kind of just the day to day, the things that they would do and the way they would live. And I really, really liked that. I really liked the hero. Initially, he's very mistrusting of the heroine and he doesn't want a lot to do with her. But she's like desperately trying to prove herself that she is worth more. And she's had a bit of a difficult background with a previous husband, there's a great bit where they basically expected her to jump on his funeral pyre and she was like, uh, no, history, hey, gotta love it. So like I said, this was just a really, really enjoyable book. I absolutely loved it and I'll definitely be keeping my eyes out for other books by Lucy Morris and indeed I need to find some other Viking romance. So if you've got any good ones to recommend, please leave me a comment below. So next up, I think this was my final arc in May, I'm pretty sure it was, and this was Undercover Duke by Sabrina Jeffries. And Sabrina Jeffries has been one of those authors but on my periphery for a while and I've been kind of like thinking oh, I really must give her a go because I feel like I've heard good things but I haven't actually got round to reading it. Now, so I discovered after reading this book that Undercover Duke is actually book four in one of her series. Did I make a note of which series? I don't know which series it is. It's book four in one of them and I really really think that I missed out because I hadn't read the first three books first. So the main plot line of this book features around the hero, who I believe is called Sheridan, is trying to solve the mystery of all of his mother's dead husbands, like there have been a fair few. And from what I gather, this is like a not overarching story of the whole series, and it all culminates in this book. 
But if you don't know any of that backstory, you are literally just thrown into the middle of it here and you don't know who anybody is, you don't know who any of the characters are, you don't know how they all tie together, and you don't really care about the mum's dead husbands. Like, why would I care about the mum's dead husbands? But anyway, that's the plot. And for me, going into this completely blind and not knowing anything about it, it felt very, very convoluted and I found it quite difficult to keep up with the murder mystery subplot and what was happening. Meanwhile, Sheridan and Vanessa, that's your hero when you're heroine, they basically have one of the most complicated setups for their relationship, their romance ever. So he is basically using her to get more information because he thinks that her mum may have had something to do with the deaths of these husbands. And so he's basically trying to get closer to her to investigate the murders. He is also secretly kind of attracted to her, but for reasons unbeknown to anybody, he doesn't want to go there. Meanwhile, Vanessa has secretly been in love with Sheridan forever, but has decided that in order to try and trick him into spending more time with her, she's going to pretend to be in love with somebody else and ask him to help, ask Sheridan to help make the other guy jealous. And so both of them are in this relationship for like ulterior motives. And it just sometimes felt like the romance took a massive backseat to all the other subplots going around. So the other guy that we were trying to attract, the murder mystery, the issue with Vanessa's mum, all of that just kind of overshadowed the romance a bit to the point where I found that I really wasn't really interested in the romance and I didn't really care and ultimately didn't feel particularly satisfied when we got to the end. I do think that maybe if I'd read the first three books maybe I would have felt differently because maybe this would have felt like the big culmination to a story that I've been following for a while but as someone picking this book up and just leaping into it blind it didn't really work for me okay so as you all know one of my favorite instagrammers to go to for book recommendations is Tiffany from Neverland Pixie she does have a book related insta as well which I will link below I can never remember the name of that one I just know her as Neverland Pixie and if she tells me that a book is good I will read it almost immediately because it always, always is spot on. On her Instagram stories, I don't remember why, she was talking about a series called The Mindfuck Series by an author who is terribly, terribly named S.T. Abby. Stabby. I loathe the author name. I get it's like a pen name. I get it's meant to be kind of funny, stroke, witty, stroke, whatever. But for me, it just seemed a bit cringy and I was thinking god this book's gonna be bad it was not bad at all this series of books is phenomenal so, so I've just checked on Goodreads and apparently ST Abbey is the pen name for C.M. Owens because they wanted to write some darker stuff that they didn't think they could put under their other name I've never read anything by that author so I have no idea but if that's of interest to you if you like their work then you may want to give this a try if you fancy trying something really really gritty basically this is a series I think there were five there's The Risk, Sidetracked, Scarlet Angel, All the Lies and Paint It Red. And these are five very, very dark romances. It's one story, five books, so, you know, brace yourself for a journey. They do all kind of end with cliffhangers, but they're also quite short. They're not completely novella length, but they are shorter than a, a large book. So you do feel like maybe it's just one whole big story split into five chapters for easy reading. And so basically this is a serial killer romance um, where you have the serial killer and you have the FBI agent trying to catch them and they're going to fall in love. But to make things interesting, your heroine is the serial killer and your hero is the FBI agent. And I really liked that. This gave me proper Dexter vibes. She is a serial killer with a conscience. She has a code. She has a plan. And she's enacting that. She's killing very specific people for very specific reasons. So basically Lana is her serial killer and there are so many trigger warnings in this book that I wouldn't know where to start because the whole thing is one big trigger warning. It is graphic, it is violent, it is intense. Um, Lana's backstory is brutal and involves a very, very, very nasty sexual and physical attack on her and her brother which is just at times quite graphically displayed and oh, not for the faint hearted at all. It is brutal. But basically she is out for revenge she has been through absolute and utter hell because of a group of people in a town and she is slowly but surely working her way down her revenge list in the meantime she meets logan in a cafe they don't know each other they have no idea of their backstories and he turns out to be an fbi agent 
maybe not the best boyfriend choice for a serial killer, but the heart wants what it wants, doesn't it? They get involved and over time their two stories begin to connect more and more and more. Um, there's so many great bit. I mean, there are so many great storylines and there are so many great twists and turns. I could not tell you them, they would spoil it all. But this book just kept me up all night in the best way. Like, I was reading this at like 12, 1 in the morning and then having to immediately download the next in the series because I needed to know where this all ended. It was amazing. Dexter, as we all know, had a bit of an unsatisfying ending. I can safely say this was not the case with the Mindfuck series. This was just, oh, it just... It's the kind of dark you don't know you need until you're given it and I absolutely loved it. The, one of the final scenes with Lana where she is just kicking ass was just amazing and Logan was such a great hero and I loved all of the kind of moral dilemmas of what wouldn't you do to either protect or to get revenge on the people who hurt your family. Like we all like to think we're civilised and we're above and we're like you know well behaved ultimately if someone we love is threatened what aren't you capable of and I really liked that and I really liked how it looked at the corruption of justice and how justice doesn't necessarily always work and whether it's okay to take that into your own hands and what do you do when you can't deny the fact that sometimes justice lets people down lets victims down it's so many deep moral philosophical arguments for a book that looks like it's going to be so kind of campy and just like almost like b-roll horror i loved it i absolutely loved it this was fantastic and i will be checking out other books by the author because wow so next up i was really gonna like i was in a dark romance mood i was in the mood to be challenged and to be dark and gritty sometimes you get like that don't you so i picked up peep show by isabella starling and this one started off very interestingly we have a hero who has some severe kind of psychological issues he has I'm assuming it's something on the lines of agoraphobia he doesn't like going out he's a bit of a hoarder he has like severe kind of OCD tendencies um there's a lot going on with him and you also have a heroine who is for various reasons in the middle of kind of drug addiction she's a very party lifestyle she's very wild she's kind of spinning off the rails a bit and they live in apartments or houses i can't remember that kind of overlook each other and they can see each other through their windows and they have a number of very hot encounters that involve them watching each other with other people through windows through the window they can see each other and they kind of it's very voyeuristic they're watching each other both of them are aware they're almost like challenging each other to up the ante on what they're prepared to do in front of the other and eventually they start to communicate and eventually start to talk and honestly <laughs> that's the point where I started to like lose it a bit like I was really into this at first when it was all kind of distance voyeurism and I was like oh I wonder you know what they're gonna do when they get together but honestly when they started to interact it just got weird there was one particular bit right near the end of the story where the hero whose name completely escapes me at the moment sorry makes a decision which I absolutely could not get behind and didn't understand and you know me I don't say that very often and it was for me really kind of just unsettling I didn't like it and that basically ruined the end of the book for me and it was a shame because up until probably about 50-60% I'd been quite into this book and then we have this one particular scene where he makes a decision basically on the heroine's behalf um, because it's the usual he doesn't think he's good enough and he thinks that he knows better what she wants than she does and so he arranges something for her which I just did not like at all it made me incredibly uncomfortable it, it just did nothing for me and it kind of ruined the happily ever after because I couldn't quite get past the fact one that he'd done it and two that she had gone along with it even sort of unwillingly it just felt odd and a bit icky and it just kind of ruined the end of the book for me so that was a shame and I think it's probably a very like a marmite scene you love it or you hate it and i can imagine there'll be people who were like that was so hot i loved it it didn't work for me so unfortunately started off really well and did not so great so then i came across another series and this was a series of five menage books that if i'm being honest weren't really menage books because these were mmf romances where the m and the m never had any romance it was always strictly the two guys around the woman it was never the two guys together so not really a strict menage but 
they were an awful lot of fun. These were by Tara Crescent and this was the Menage in Manhattan series. There are five books in the series. There is The Bet. I'm going to, have to, re going to have to refer to my notes now. The Bet, The Gamble, The Heat, The Wager and The Hack. I mean, we spoke earlier about the unlikelihood of all these friends in one town going through the same kind of traumas. In this series, we have five friends who all end up in Menage relationships, which is probably equally as unlikely and did make me smile. So each book has its own kind of premise around why these people meet. So the first one revolves a woman wanting to learn pool to win a pool tournament because her ex-boyfriend was a jerk who told her that she was terrible at pool. She meets two very, very rich, very, very sexy men who want to teach her pool and a few other things. Um, and so she starts dating them. And when she first starts to have a menage relationship, all of her friends are like, oh my goodness, this is scandalous. Having a menage relationship, you and two men, what, what shock. By the end of the series, they are all doing it. Like, every one of them is in the same kind of relationship. It was funny. It made me smile. But it was, it, it is what it is, isn't it? So the second one, The Gamble, is all about casinos. It's all betting. It's a woman who is involved in some kind of, like, helping uncover a, like, underground gambling ring. And she's helping two guys out with their investigations. And, of course, they end up together. The third one is The Heat, which was about Piper. She's literally the only name in the entire series I can remember, but Piper. And she has a failing restaurant and she gets help from two investors who are going to try and help her reboot the restaurant. Um, they get involved in a relationship and they all work together. In that one, there's also a very disapproving family who are trying to make her life more difficult and trying to bring down her restaurant, as well as a kind of reality TV style cooking competition, which has got some kind of twists and turns in that as well so that was quite a good one I liked that uh the next one is the wager this one was about a woman who had inherited a business and needed help to kind of win a bet around the business I can't remember the exact terms and she meets two guys and she gets involved with them they're helping her out the business for their own reasons this one's actually a surprise baby romance that's not a spoiler it does say so in the blurb but this is actually a surprise baby with her and the two guys and then the final one is The Hack, which is probably my favourite one of the five. Um, this one features a young woman who is kind of hired to go and hack into a security company to undermine it and to kind of break down its systems. She, while she's there, falls for the two guys who own the company and they there's a lot of kind of ulterior motives. They know she's the hacker, she doesn't know that they know. They're also secretly all talking to each other on like an online chat forum. It was a really just enjoyable one. I really liked the dynamics of like that one. I liked the twists and the fact that they didn't always know what the other people were thinking, what was going on. So that's probably my favourite of the five. But I did enjoy all of them. I liked how all of them had a slightly different setup. They all obviously did the same kind of thing in different ways. A lot of them dealt with the issue of other people not accepting the relationship or people having to hide it because it wouldn't be seen to be respectable or to be a kind of admirable relationship to be in like a lot of people thought it would affect their careers or their personal or professional lives and so there was a lot of that kind of subplot but each one of them was really good fun they weren't difficult to read um there were lots of steamy times although like i said it was all straight it is all straight <laughs> MMF romance. There is no MM at any point. It was a fun little series and it took no reading at all, so I enjoyed that one. Next up was a book that I was waiting for for so, so long, but I knew it would eventually come on Kindle Unlimited and it didn't immediately, and so I sat and I waited and waited and waited, and then eventually it did, so I was glad I had waited. And this was Tempting Fate by Kerry Gunburn, and this is the next book in the Good Girl series, which I have been really, really enjoying. Um, I think I've spoken a lot about how much I enjoy Kerry Gunburn's books, if I'm honest. And basically, Tempting Fate is the book of Gabriel, and what is her name? Why can't I remember any names today? What is wrong with me? It's Felicity. Of course it is. This is Gabriel and Felicity. And in Dancing with Danger, which was one of my favourite books in the series so far, we see Gabriel, he is, I mean, we know that Kerrigan is good at writing scarred heroes, right? That's her thing. That's her jam. Gabriel is the ultimate scarred hero. When we meet him in Dancing with Danger, he is literally deformed. He's, he's missing a nose, I think. His face has got more scars than you know what to do with. He is a proper Frankenstein's monster of a man. And he's about to go undergo some pretty intense operations to help him to look a little bit more normal so he can go around in public. And also so it can conceal his identity. He's been a criminal all his life and he wants to basically live a normal life. So at the end of Dancing with Danger, 
there's a big scene where he ends up having to rescue Felicity and we kind of get a hint that there is romance brewing between the two of them, sort of, but that's where it leaves. At the beginning of Tempting Fate, um, for various reasons, Felicity thinks that Gabriel is dead and she is looking for a bodyguard protector because she's had some threats on her life. We don't know who it's by yet. We don't know much about why or what the threat is, but she hires a protector and she happens to meet Gareth. So she hires Gareth um, to come and protect her and she instantly feels safe with him and she feels a connection with him and a bond to him. And we as an audience know that this guy is actually Gabriel with all the reconstruction on his face, but Felicity has no idea. And I just absolutely adored this book so much. So this is a scenario where both of the characters are virgins. Um, obviously Gabriel has never really had the opportunity to have a romantic relationship and Felicity is a young woman of her time. She is seeking to get married, um, so she's kind of going out into society and Gabriel Stroke Gareth is getting more and more jealous and more hell up because he really, really wants her, but I mean, he really just thinks that he would taint her in every possible way like he does not i know we have that trope of men not thinking they're good enough but i think gabriel has that times a thousand he is probably up there with my favorite of kerrigan's heroes along with like the rook i loved him that much he was so sweet every single thought he had was about protecting felicity it was all about her and scenes towards the end when Felicity is talking to Raphael, who is Gabriel's brother, and kind of, you know, trying to get better more understanding of who his character is, and Raphael's just like, it's literally all about you. Like, it's, he's just all about you. Everything he's done has been for you. It's just perfect. This book was adorable. I think this is going straight to the top of my good girl's priority list. And it, it's even, oh, it's even up there with the Homan and the Duke with the Dragon Tattoo. I couldn't choose between them. I absolutely love this one. This was a fantastic addition to the series. I can't wait to see where we go next. So next up we have The Blind Date by Lauren Landish. I have no idea where I picked this book up from. I just saw it and went, I'm gonna try you. I was in the mood for something light and fluffy. As you can probably gather, I was in quite a dark romance mood and I thought we maybe needed to shift that and come into something a little bit nicer. So we ended up with The Blind Date by Lauren Landish. This story I think it's a really really interesting premise so basically you have Riley she's an influencer she's a youtuber she has a very public persona of being very smiley very sunshiny very happy everything was perfect and wonderful and you have I really want to remember his name why can I not remember names today and then we have Noah so Noah is the creator of the dating app along with Riley's older brother I believe and the basic premise and the unique selling point of this dating app is that it doesn't feature the people's faces. So the whole point is you're not meant to fall in love with how someone looks, you're meant to fall in love with a character first before you meet them. Riley joins the dating app because she wants to meet someone without her public persona getting in the way, without people going, I recognise you from YouTube. And Noah joins the dating app to basically test it, to see if the algorithm works, to see how improvements could be made. They obviously match up with each other and it's like a 96% match. It's completely unrealistic and unbelievable for them that they could have met someone who is this perfect for them on paper and they get chatting and they instantly have a connection and they instantly hit it off. Which is awkward because in real life they don't get on very well and it's kind of like a bit of an enemies to lovers situation. They ultimately go on their blind date, they meet up and are horrified to discover who the person behind the messages actually is and that's kind of where the real romance kicks off. I absolutely loved this one, I found it such an easy romantic comedy-esque um, book to read. I loved all the bits about Riley's kind of YouTube career. I loved watching him kind of try and integrate himself into that, helping to support her. Just watching him be introduced into that kind of influencer lifestyle it did make the final conflict a little bit annoying because she is far less understanding and accepting than he is like he tries to do something for his career and his business and she kind of shuts him down immediately and is like you're not doing that you're not using me which was annoying but ultimately it all wrapped up very nicely and i really really enjoyed it i do like brothers best friend romances i do like kind of dating app when they don't know when they turns out they know them all of these tropes are tropes i really enjoy I have seen people say that this book is cheesy and it's corny and it kind of is but it's that kind of romance novel where you don't really mind 
because it is just meant to be something light, something easygoing, something good natured. And after reading like weeks worth of dark romance, this is really the kind of book I needed. So it really worked for me. I've also seen people complaining about the influencer culture and how, you know, Riley's character is annoying because she's an influencer. And I'd just like to point out if you are writing a review on Instagram or Goodreads or anything else or doing anything on YouTube, you are an influencer, my friend. Welcome to the dark side. So, you know, stop throwing stones and judging other people because each to their own. It may not be your preferred way of doing it, but I don't think we can just start going, I don't like this book because the character's a YouTuber. Really? Pot, kettle, black, anyone? So next up, I picked Break Up With Him For Me, which may be the longest, most convoluted title I've ever read. And this was by Whitney G. And I think I've read quite a few Whitney G books in the past. And I think I seem to have a bit of a hit or miss relationship in that I either absolutely really enjoy them, not that I can think of any stuff in my head, but I feel like I have really enjoyed some of them. And others are just a bit of a miss. This one, unfortunately, fell into the character category of a bit of a miss for me. So this wasn't really friends to lovers or enemies to lovers, it was more frenemies to lovers. I found the hero and the heroine's relationship incredibly difficult to gel with. This is another like brother's best friend romance. I think it's another dating app romance as well, but not between the couples. Like, I think the hero is designed a dating app, if I remember rightly. I'm quite making that up, but it rings a bell. But his dating app is like almost the opposite of the blind date one. It's all about hookups. It's meant to be like the competition to Tinder. Um, and I just really didn't like the two main characters relationship at all. It's very odd friendship that develops between them where they sort of don't seem to like each other, they're just thrown together through necessity. And then the author tries to kind of get us to assume that they've basically been attracted to each other, for, but you don't really see an awful lot of that attraction and romance on the page. It's all more kind of like you're told he's always been attracted to her, but you don't necessarily have a lot of moments of them connecting. I think my main issue with this book as well is that a lot of this book is spent with the hero trying to give the heroine advice on how to get a boyfriend or how to deal with her boyfriends or how to break up with them. So he spends most of his time advising her on relationships with other people and I do mean most of the time, that's probably like 70% of the book. And I personally, I don't mind a kind of fake relationship plot or a would you help me to learn how to date but ultimately those plots have to very quickly shift into romance between the two and this took quite a while. Like most of the chapters are just flashbacks to her previous relationships which just weren't that exciting. I wasn't that interested. I wanted to see her with the hero. I wanted to see them develop. The hero was a bit of an ass. He was a bit of a douchebag. I didn't love him and I just really wanted both of them to come up and say to each other, hey I fancy you much earlier than we did. So sadly this just one wasn't really for me. It just didn't quite hit the mark. But you can't win them all. I would still definitely give other Whitney G books a go because like I said I'm sure I have read them in the past and enjoyed them. This was probably just one of those that doesn't work for me. It's fine. So next up I got into another series. This was the Serve series and I think it actually got multiple authors write different books but the two that I read which were Owned by Fate and Exposed by Fate are both by Tessa Bailey and these both centre around Surf, which is a BDSM club and the kind of the goings on that happen in that club. So book one is about Caroline and Jonah. Caroline is a journalist who, for very complicated reasons relating to her dad's financial magazine, needs to go into this BDSM club, Surf, and try and write a scathing article about it, about what happens there. While she's there she meets Jonah who owns the club and he's instantly attracted to Caroline and he tries to introduce her to his way of thinking and to the real kind of the reality of BDSM and how it works. Um, it's very steamy, it's a lot of fun this book is. Um, their relationship I found just a tad frustrating. Caroline is really really down on any kind of kink or I don't even want to say unusual because nothing is unusual really is it but she's very like down on the BDSM lifestyle and all of that and she's very dismissive of it and kind of just quite disrespectful of it even though she secretly really enjoys what she does with Jonah but she's very ashamed of it 
I kind of didn't like that about her character, but at the same time I understand that was literally her development, was her coming to terms and re coming to the realisation that there is nothing wrong with desiring what you desire, it's not, doesn't make you like less respectable or less of a good person, just because you like what you like, that's each to their own. I think the fact that she kept saying how she couldn't be with Jonah because it would like look badly on her career or on her professional status but then she would keep going back and back and back to him rather than just cutting ties was a bit annoying but ultimately I liked where it ended up. I did much prefer book two which was exposed by fate. This one featured Caroline's best friend Eliza and her brother Oliver and basically Eliza really wants to try out the club and everything that it offers but she's very shy and she's very nervous because she's never really done anything like this before and she doesn't really know where to start and after getting into a situation where she feels a bit out of her depth she meets up with Oliver and Oliver obviously has known her for a very long time she's his sister's best friend and he offers to help teach her a bit about BDSM so she feels more confident going to meet other people and to fully explore the clubs he offers her like three nights of instruction in the lifestyle and they start to meet up and they have these dates and this I really really enjoyed this one I really enjoyed their relationship I really enjoyed watching them kind of kind of break through that barrier of being just friends and kind of realizing that actually there was a lot more going for them than that they actually really did like each other I think my only criticism and my only real frustration with the book is you could have totally finished this book at 50% if the two of them had just spoken to each other because very 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 quickly they both separately realized that they actually wanted to be in a relationship with each other so she didn't want to go and find a different partner and he didn't want to keep sleeping with everybody he wanted to be faithful to her but neither of them told the other that because they both assumed they knew what the other wanted they'd agreed no strings they'd agreed no commitments and they both rather than just coming out to each other and saying hey just so you know i'd be open to more if you were they literally just carry on with the plan for the whole book it just got a bit frustrating and a bit you wanted to bang their heads together but I did really really like this and I will at some point be continuing with the series because I believe we get the next book by Katie Roberts and it's her first BDSM novel that she wrote so I am very very excited to find out how that goes because I have very high expectations of that one. Whew. And last up my last book of May and my only paperback in this entire video was Lisa Claypass's Mind Till Midnight. Now I was supposed to be joining in the Reading in Fairyland's buddy read of this series, this is the Hathaway series, and we read the Wallflower series previously and now we've moved on to these, and I was supposed to be reading along with them and I have got so far behind it's not even funny, it took me so long to get this and then pick it up and get into it. This is Amelia and Cam's story and Amelia is one of the Hathaways and basically they have recently come into inheritance and they found themselves in a position of society that they weren't really expecting and they weren't really prepared for and they end up in this ramshackle estate that they have to try and keep going. Um, Lisa Claypass is really really good at writing families that are interesting and kind of making you want to know what's going to happen to the rest of the family and the Hathaways are exactly the same. I'm already desperate to know what's going to go on with the rest of the family and where their stories are going to take them. Cam we met originally in Devil in Winter and I know everybody was really surprised when he didn't get paired up with Daisy in the fourth book of the Wallflower series. Um, I was really glad he didn't, like I really enjoyed that book, which was that one, is that Scandal in Spring? I think so, but I can't remember. But I really liked the pairing in that one, but it is nice to see where he eventually ends up and I adored him with Amelia. I absolutely loved him. I loved the fact that he went from just wanting to get her into bed to wanting to have a long-term relationship with her very quickly and I really liked his whole so Cam is from a Romany background and I really liked the fact that that meant he's a very different hero to the hero you're used to getting in kind of Regency Victorian romances he's very different to those straight-laced men who live by kind of society's dictates he lives by his own rules the rules of his people and the traditions of his people and what I really liked is the moment in this when he just realizes if this is where my path is taking me then I have to follow it and my path is taking me to Amelia and that's where I'm going and he just accepts it very quickly which is so different to a lot of men in historical romance novels that really won me over. I really 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 enjoyed this book. I loved the relationship between him and Amelia. I loved lots and lots of the kind of 
moments that happened between the two of them and also I really loved the moments we saw with the other siblings so I am desperate to find out what happens between Mary Penn and Wynne because I'm assuming they're going to end up together and what is going to happen with Leo because he's having a rough time at the moment and someone needs to help him. I feel he needs the love of a good woman to save him. Hmm, maybe. But yeah, so this was a really, really good book. I don't know if I'm going to catch up with the rest of the read along um, because I'm a couple of books behind now, but I'm going to try. And yeah, I had such a good time reading this one. Lisa Claypass does it again. And there we have it. That is all the books that I read in May in two sections. And I don't think it took too long. And yes, I am now officially from now starting weekly wrap ups. Every week in June, we're going to wrap up what we've read that week to hopefully make these videos much shorter, much easier to manage. And I might actually remember one of the characters' names occasionally. So thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you want to keep updated with when I've uploaded a new video. And I will see you again very soon. Bye.